Hi, today we're at Torre del Vigor, where we're going to explore the history and the wines of this long family-owned winery. And uh, maybe a little later, I might just get married in the chapel here on the grounds. Play on. We're here with Joachim. He's going to show us around the grounds and uh, you know, give us the, the guided tour, walk us through the history, um, where uh, Torre del Vega is today and where it's going to be uh, hopefully in the future. Well, there is, we are uh, a winery producing quality wine uh, with, our, uh, with our own grapes with history since 1359. Um, and I hope that in the future we, we get to the uh, excellence. In the winemaking. Quality is very <laughs> modest. They're producing excellent wines already. <laughs> Alright, let's go let's go inside. Okay. Alright. <laughs> I knew I'd get there. But where do I be looking? I didn't know what I was looking for. So uh, tell us about the, the history and I guess the current functionality of this room. Mm -hmm. So nowadays we are in the aging area, uh, in the winery, but in, in, in the past you know, it was built in 1959, the mid 14th century, and it was, uh, it was uh, not a, a house, but it was like a meeting point for, for the neighborhood. They live in tiny houses, so they don't have much space to amuse, to cook, to, to do their lives. So they, they, they used to come here. They were like nine or ten different houses. They meet here, and they well in the winter they protect from the, from the cold with doing some fires. That's why they are flat, no, the ceiling. So in the summer they also cook here, so they live the life. In the, in the beginnings of the 15th century, uh, the monks came to live here and they, they used also this part to, to live, but also they started to, to do wine. X marks the spot. So the thing is, it was pretty much just this this room. Yeah. Or, you know. and, and nowadays uh -huh. we have here the, the old barrels to age the, the red wines and also some white wines. Uh, they are mostly they are French uh, uh, barrels, but also we have American and English. So we're gonna saunter on over to the fermentation room and talk about the wines. Fermentation room. Yes. Uh, so talk us about the uh, the varieties that are grown here, and and the wines um, specifically that you bottle. Yes, the, the varietals that we grow are uh, in the white Muscat de Gran Petit, Muscat de Frontignan. The second is Charello that we can also find some vines of Charello Barney, and uh, we are growing Malvasia. Uh, for the red varieties, we, we plant Cabernet Sauvignon, um, Petit Chira, and we are growing Garnacha. So we have four in production and six uh, in total. Okay. Also, they are being treated as if we do uh, uh, ecologic organic viticulture. Uh, we will have our first recognized wine in the next big vintage, the Charello variety that we started. Within the vineyard, so you can find fossils. That, that, yes. that, that's the that's So we have like two different soils. Uh, the ones that are closer to the Massis del Garraf, that is a natural park. Uh, it's a rocky formation from many million years ago, then, and this brings us chalk, uh, limestone, and we can find fossils. Part 
it has not finished yet, but is the aromas that it has now in mind are very fruity. Fruity aromas, like uh, blackberry. And in this state, will, uh, will it be uh, the, the minerality of the wine? Will it be yes. even stronger? Yes, yes. everything is strong because it's uh, it's still sweet, but it begins to be wine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and for Cabernet, um, the tannins are very subtle. Because you know, in, in California, like Cabernet and Cal, like we're in the United States, it's, it's always about you know big, you know, like very tannic wines, you know, almost astringent, you know, like pull water out of your mouth. So here we are in the chapel. Um, and it's still, you know, you know, tell us about it, and um, no, I understand it's also still being used. Well, uh, nowadays it is used from time to time. With well, no? uh, not many people do a religious wedding nowadays in Spain, but if they want to do it, they can do it here in Tarragona. And, and it was this chapel, it was built in the 1890s, uh, so in a, in a second phase, of, um, well, in the 1890s. And, and, and it, 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 Nowadays, it's, uh, well, things are, are changing. No? They, they did the mess. At that time, uh, the neighborhood came here, so every Sunday, or, or every Sunday, they opened the doors and the people could come here to, to listen to the mess. Now, this is a very curious and interesting room. Um, I recognize the face on the wall, so, uh, and I'm sure a lot of other people will too, so tell us about it. So now we are in the Dali, Dali cellar, Dali area, and well, it, we have here some unique items that, uh, due to the relation to, to, between my uncle and Salvador Dali, uh, the brother of my grandfather, um, we have some different uh, letters or drawings that are directly sent or written to him. So, um, well, for instance, here we have a, a letter which is uh, telling to my uncle to attend his friend Amir Pujnau for here a drawing uh, with a man with girl also shapes with a lobster in the heart in the head. Here we have also some letters and handwritten by Salvador Dali. I uh, understand uh, that you have some tunnels here. Um, yes. And it's like you can actually use these tunnels to escape from the vineyard or the winery. Uh, you can also use them to escape to the winery, right? I mean, I guess that would be an interesting way to um, to come for a tour, right? Uh, actually, come underneath. <laughs> um, tell us about that. The tunnels. Like you, this is actually a recent discovery for you guys. Yeah, it is. Well. Uh, we, we know that from here to the Mediterranean Sea, that there are more or less 3-4 kilometers, there is a, a, well, a field, some plot, that they call the mine camp, so Camp de la Mina, because they are, there are holes, some, from time to time, time they find holes in the ground. And that's, that the reason is because there are, like here, there are uh, different galleries from the Masias, are here, there are, there are some that connected with the sea, the, 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 the Masia with the sea. And it was an escape way from the 16th, 17th century, where they, they used to be in pirates and they, they came by, by the sea. So, in case they, the invaders come in, going to come here, they could escape underneath and that's, that's the, the gallery. And big productions, uh, the most successful wines 
are the muscat and eclectic. Okay. Uh, we are going to try the muscat uh, 2013. Uh, very aromatic white wine, but in, in the mouth is not is not sweet. You expect a, a sweet wine, but we 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 do it. To, to surprise a little bit the, the customers and when, what they are expecting in the mouth, uh, they find fruit, they find uh, uh, also volume, but but not uh, not uh, sweetness. Uh, well, I find it, these uh, aromas, no fruity aromas, uh, and in the mouth. Okay, guys, um, thank you for uh, allowing us to visit. Um, and you guys need to come visit Joachim and Raquel as well. Uh, give her a call, arrange a tour, and, uh, and, uh, and Joachim will take you around the grounds as well. So uh, it's like, thank you guys. It's wonderful. And, um, oh, cheers. And, thank, and as I said, excellent wine. Not quality, excellent. <laughs> Take care of you If you get lost, I'm gonna find you Stay clear